In today's demonstration, inspired by a post that I saw on Reddit, I'm going to show you how you can return a document to a user in Copilot Studio. So this might sound quite a straightforward task, but in today's demo, I'm going to show you how you can combine a prompt for document templates, a flow to wrap that in input and output parameters, and then a topic to slot fill those parameters into your flow to then create that document and return it back to the user. This is a walkthrough. You're going to learn an awful lot in this video. So I recommend that you watch on. And if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. Let's jump across into Copilot Studio. So over on Copilot Studio, you'll see down on the right hand side, I already have a prompt to ask for a file to be generated. Now this is slot filling into the parameters that we see over on the activity map on the left hand side. And then it's returning to the user the ability to download a document. Now this document, when I click on the icon here, is downloaded to my local machine. It's not saved on SharePoint. If I then go and open up that file, you'll note that it has been personalized. I asked for it to generate a file for Alistair for the 1st of January at 6 p.m. and to bring hat, scarf, and gloves. So all of those values have been passed to that template, which I've defined, and I will get a consistent invitation letter every single time I ask my agent to generate a document. Now, if you think about that for standard letters that you're sending as part of your organization, you can generate these templates, you can save them, add them to the prompt in this case, and I'll show you in a minute how you can do that. And then every single time you ask your agent to generate a file, it will ask you for those input parameters and it will generate that same consistent output each and every single time. So how does this actually work? So the first thing I'm going to do, whilst it has opened up the topic that demonstrates how to do this, is to quickly jump across into tools. Now, I did initially try and add a prompt directly into my agent, and you'll note that I've currently got that turned off. It's because when I tested this out, that feature didn't work. I couldn't get my prompt to return a file to the end user. Similarly, I wrapped that prompt in a flow, and again, you'll note it's turned off because I tested it and it didn't work. Which is why if we jump across onto topics, you'll see I have a topic called populate a word doc flow. And what that does is based on a particular trigger description, in this case, generate me an invite, it will trigger this topic, it will call a flow, and it will output that document to the end user because this is a deterministic pattern that I have defined. But we are using AI as part of this. We are using a capability known as slot filling. And if I click on this details tab at the top here, you'll see that we've got input parameters. Now these input parameters are topic input parameters, which allows the generative orchestration, the language model to identify these values based on descriptions. Now I've defined a variable for things to bring for the event time for the event date and also for the person's name. All these values are added to the document when it's generated. Now, because they're defined as input parameters, it means that our agent will attempt to identify these values whenever that topic is run. And because it outputs variables as part of this process, I can then use these variables when I call the flow. And you'll see that I've used the event time, the event date, the person's name and the things to bring. But you'll also note that I have a property called my name. These are all values that are passed to my prompt, which I'll show you shortly. They're either fixed values or they're dynamically generated using AI and saved to variables. Now, if I was to reset this conversation on the right hand side and just ask the agent to create an invitation for the 1st of January at 6 p.m. for Alistair, again, you'll note the process is that it will slot fill. It's identified the time, the date, the person's name, but of course, it's missing the things to bring because I haven't specified them in my prompt to the agent. Now, if I specify haggis, neeps and tatties, that will slot fill those values. And then, of course, it will generate a document. Now, I don't know about you, but it certainly warms me up on a cold night, especially when it's snowing like it is right now here in Aberdeen. So over on my agent flow that I've built, you can see that I have a trigger and then three actions. Now the trigger has five input parameters defined. Those input parameters are those values that I slot fill. The event time, date, person's name, my name, which is fixed in this case, 
and also things to bring. But then the magic is all happening within run a prompt. Now, if we have a look at run a prompt, we can see again, I have various input parameters using those values from the trigger and passing them into the input parameters. But if I click on edit, we can now go and have a look at the prompt. So this is the prompt. And as you can see, it's simply populating a Word document, which we'll have a look at in a minute, including the person's name, the event date, time, things to bring, and my name. And if I was to click on one of those input parameters, you can see that there's some sample data. So in the case of things to bring, we have chocolate cake. In terms of person's name, we have Emily. Now, if we look at the document settings over on the right-hand side, you can see it has identified fields, and that's based on a document called invite letter .docx. Now, earlier, I created a Word document, invite letter .docx, and you'll note that there are various placeholders. They're all wrapped in double squiggly brackets. So if you want to use document generation in prompts, you can wrap those parameters in squiggly brackets, and you can then populate those values all using a prompt. And that's what gives you that consistent output. It will always use that file for that particular prompt. Back over on that prompt, if I hit the test button, it will run that prompt with the sample data and it will present to me an output file that I can download, I can open, and I can check the content. So Emily has been invited on the 19th of December at 7 p.m. and has been asked to bring some chalk cake. If I now go ahead and close that prompt and have a look at the rest of the flow, you'll note that I've got a compose action and I've simply put this in place here just to demonstrate that the output that I return to the agent is not as you'd expect. So I have an expression here. It is for the content bytes. I'll allow you to copy that. It might not be something that is available dynamically, so you might need to write this out or use parse JSON, of course, with a sample data. But when I tried to return this value back to my agent, I found that the file that was presented was then corrupt. It wouldn't download, or when it did download, it wouldn't open in Word. So in the respond to agent, I have a property, which is a file output. So when adding an output, make sure you select file. And then if you look at the expression that I'm using, it is that same contents bytes expression, but wrapped in binary. And that ensures that the file is in the right format and your agent will then be able to present that file to your end user. So jumping back across onto my agent, if we have a look at the rest of this particular topic, I have an output here. That is the file property. That is the binary value that's been sent back to our agent using our agent flow. I then have a message node which has here is your invite letter. And then I've simply clicked on add and file type here, which if I click on the media type, you can see that we have to present the content, which is based on that file property, which has come from the output of our flow. And then we have a file name, which is entirely optional. But because we can use PowerFX, I've generated a file name, nice and friendly, your invitation, underscore, the topic variable for the person's name, and then dot docx. So if I ask my agent to generate a letter for Emily, it will have, of course, attempt to slot fill. It's identified that person's name, but it's now gonna systematically ask me what things to bring, the event date, the event time, depending how I respond. Bring some cake and the party is on 2nd of Jan at 9 p.m. I've given the agent everything it needs to slot fill calling that topic and it'll go away, generate that file. I can click on the download, open up that Word document and we can see that it's been customized with Emily's name, the date, the time and the things to bring. And that's all there is to it. So I'd like to say thanks very much for watching. Hopefully see you again sometime soon. If you haven't already liked and subscribed or left me a message, make sure you do. Otherwise, I'll see you on the forums. I'll see you on my channel and have a good 2026. Cheers.